farts all the time I needed to fill. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Feels great. I'm feeling good. I, I actually just recently had to go to the emergency room, though, and I had some stomach virus thing. I almost called an ambulance. It's weird, even considering calling an ambulance for yourself. You know? You call ambulances for other people, right? What are you supposed to say about yourself? Can you come get me? <laughs> yeah, I don't feel so good. Just come on in, I'll be lying on the floor. <laughs> I'm just looking at the phone going, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do. It was at night, so I drove myself to the emergency room. That's a nice relaxing drive. No, after you. Merge, everybody, merge. I'm only imploding. So I, I pull up at the entrance to the emergency room. No valet parking. I mean, if that's not the biggest oversight in our solar system. If there's ever a time where you want to go, can you park this because I need to collapse immediately. But no, I'm circling around the parking lot. Can I park there? I think I'm going to die. I'm dying too. Okay, go ahead. I'll go up a couple levels. Unbelievable. I don't care if you're driving yourself or someone else to the emergency room. You still want to get out and run in with them. Are you supposed to drop somebody off and go park a car? Okay, you go in. Tell him you're shot. <laughs> Ask him if they validate. <laughs> Unbelievable. So I finally park, you know. I go in to check in. They ask the most insulting question when you check into a hospital. What seems to be the problem? <laughs> what seems... Well, it seems. It seems like everything on my inside wants to be on my outside. But I'm no doctor. What kind of condescending question? So they check me into my luxurious half room. There's a curtain down the middle with a mystery patient on the other side. And he's moaning over there. Man, they're never gonna help me with him moaning like that. So I gotta out moan him, you know. Quit moaning, we're all hurting. The whole floor is like a haunted choir. It's gotta be hell to work in this environment. So I'm killing time writhing. Nurse finally comes in. How are you doing tonight? I'm on a gurney. You have a painkiller or something? This is killing me. So she goes, how would you describe your pain? It's killing. I don't know if you remember that part. Um, ouch. What, are we playing that pyramid game? Um excruciating <laughs> horrific uh, would rather have shards of glass in my eyes how do I convey this to you so she asks how would you rate your pain four stars two enthusiastic thumbs up she goes, how would you rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the worst? Well, you know, saying a low number isn't going to help you. Oh, I'm a 2. Maybe the high 1s. You could give me a baby aspirin and cut it in half. Maybe a Flintstone vitamin and I'll be out of your hair. You can go 10 to all the 3s and 4s and such. If anyone's saying such ridiculous numbers. I couldn't bring myself to say 10, though, because I had heard the worst pain a human can endure is getting the femur bone cracked in half. And I don't know if that's true. 
But I thought, if it is, they have exclusive rights to 10. <laughs> and now I'm thinking, what was I worried about? Is there like a femur ward at the hospital they would have heard about me and hobble into my room? Who the hell? <laughs> have the audacity <laughs> to say he was at a level 10! You know nothing about 10. Give me a sledgehammer. Let me show you what 10 is all about, Mr. Tommy A. No! No, no! How can I possibly say 10? I can't. So I thought I'll say 9. And then I thought, no, childbirth. I better not try to compete with that. And then I'm thinking, you'd almost be hell giving childbirth when your femur bone's cracking. So I said, I, I guess I'm an eight. She goes, oh, okay, I'll be back. I'm like, oh, I blew it. <laughs> I ain't getting nothing with eight. But she surprised me. She comes in, she goes, the doctor told me to give you morphine immediately. And I'm like, morphine? That's what they gave the guy in Saving Private Ryan right before he died. I'm like, okay, I'm a, I'm a four. I'm a zero. I'm a negative 11 teen. Morphine. So they gave me morphine. Wow. All I know is about 15 minutes later, just for the hell of it, I was like, I'm an eight again. <laughs> Guess who's an eight? <laughs> and they finally checked me out. I'm walking down the hall going, say eight, say eight, say eight, say eight. Happy eight day. Did you get some eight? Did you get any eight? What am I throwing? You can't throw a number. Johnny Appleseed. Did you get any aid over there? I don't understand my own visuals. All right. <laughs> Up here throwing numbers around. <laughs> I'm fine now, I think. I don't know. So they sent me to my regular doctor for a follow-up, and I was nervous going because my uh, cholesterol. <laughs> I knew it was going to be high because last year it was high, and uh, I hadn't done anything different. <laughs> What are the odds your cholesterol is going to plummet for no reason? <laughs> come on, 200, come on. 337, how can that be? I had Burger King coupons in my pocket. It's inexplicable. <laughs> so I was nervous. And I realized that's the only time as an adult that I feel like a little kid. Is when I go to the doctor, you didn't do what I told you, did you? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> What should you have done? I should have listened when you were talking to me. What are you going to do from now on? Pay attention when you say things. When are you going to start? I'm going to start right now. Immediately. Call doctor. He's a good doctor, I think, you know. I told him I get heartburn sometimes, so he goes and gets me a list of things that cause heartburn. I'm looking at the list and I'm like, I already know this. I know how to get it. That's like going into the hospital with a cannonball wound and they show you a list. Here's how you get cannonball wounds. I already, I, I have a cannonball wound. It's gaping. You have a tube of cannonball wound ointment? <laughs> Number one, do not stand directly in front of a cannon. How true that is. So, my doctor looks at me and says, uh, you should probably drop a couple pounds there, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Only your doctor has carte blanche on insults. He just insults you for a while, and then you pay him for the insults on the way out. Boy, you should lose some weight, and uh, those moles are looking pretty weird. <laughs> All right, how much for that, doc? <laughs> when can we get together again? 
big fat mole man walking out of your office. Thanks for the confidence boost. I'm off to the Macy's Day Parade. Grab a rope! What does he care? You're big and you're ugly. Next. He does care. Doctors are good people. That's why they avoid the word pain. It's a buzzword. They won't hit it a lot. They don't want to scare anybody. Doctors will tell you all about pressure. They'll tell you all about the pressure you're going to experience. If a doctor tells you you're about to feel some pressure, buckle up. In a moment, you're going to feel a bit of pressure. Pressure hurt like hell! Pressure. All pain involves pressure. That's one of the definitions of pain. You could be swinging a two-by-four at your head. In a moment, you're going to feel a little bit of pressure. Hey, bring it on. I'm good under pressure. I like pressure situations. So, oh, so my doctor, he told me to watch what I'm eating, told me to read food labels. I'm in the store reading the Fig Newtons label. I've always liked Fig Newtons. I'm trying to see if it's okay to eat them, and everything looked fine, the fat content, everything. I looked at the serving size, two cookies. <laughs> Who the hell eats two cookies? <laughs> I eat Fig Newtons by the sleeve. <laughs> two sleeves is a serving size. I open them both and eat them like a tree chipper. <laughs> Fig Newton shavings coming off the side. <laughs> Put a Newton catcher and empty that bag out as a snack. What the hell are they talking about? Two Fig Newtons. With the size of a poacher stamp. You want another one? Oh, I don't know. I've already had two whole entire Fig Newtons. Maybe I could try to muscle one more down, but I don't think I'm going to... Mmm, right, I'm stuffed with the rafters. They're nuts. We got an ER here. We got a three Fig Newton eater. How many did he have? What is he, nut? Doesn't he read? Who's coming up with serving sizes? A serving size of ice cream is a half a cup. What is that? What? Is that like a joke some guy put on there? Hey, come here. Look what I put for the serving size. Did you see? I just did it as a joke, but they're going out like that. I don't know what to do. Just let it go. I guess there's nothing you can do now. You ever know anybody to eat a half a cup of ice cream? Hey, you want to go grab something to eat? Oh, no. I had a half a cup of ice cream. Yeah, a whole half a cup. I just kept eating and eating and eating. I must have had two spoonfuls. I think a serving size of ice cream is when you hear the spoon hit the bottom of the container. You know? right? And you can't do this anymore. I even ripped the side. Not sure what they're talking about for the half a cup of ice cream. I have to lay off dairy, though. That's what my doctor threw in as I was leaving his office. Oh, and I'll lay off dairy. I'm like, what the hell? What kind of blanket sweep is that? And no more happiness. <laughs> Away with you. What does he care? I'm trying to lay off dairy. I'm in the supermarket with my little cart and I'm trying to avoid the dairy aisle. I can see they all have party hats on over there. <laughs> I'm in the juice aisle. Slooped over with juice people. Ugh. I learned something in the juice aisle, and that is, I don't know what's going on with cranberries, but they're getting in all the other juices. Whoever the salesman is for cranberries does a great job. He's showing up everywhere. Hey, what do you got, apples? Put some cranberries in them. We'll call it cran apple, go 50-50. What do you got, grapes? How about cran grape? What do you got, mangoes? Cran mango. What do you got, pork chops? Cran chops. <laughs> Why don't you back off, Cran Man? Why don't you take your sales trophy and have a vacation? He's working too hard. He's making the other fruit guys feel bad, you know? 
Like the banana guy wakes up. Man, I ain't into nothing. <laughs> Cram man's all coupled up. You gotta get cracking, banana man. You? you gotta get on a stick. <laughs> My doctor also told me to, uh, you know, eat more fruit. So I, was, I had some Pop Tarts this morning. <laughs> Nice thin layer in there. You ever look at a Pop-Tarts box? They have directions on there. Can, can there be a simpler food item than Pop-Tarts? Like if the directions weren't on there, would somebody, what the? How do I get that goodness in me? What do you do? How do you get it done? You read, man. That's what you do. They have two sets of directions. In case you don't understand one set, you abandon that whole track and get on something a little easier for yourself. They have a set of toaster directions, which, believe it or not, is more than one step. How could there possibly be more than one step? I can only think of one. Step one, toast the Pop-Tarts. Go ahead, toast them. Hey, are you still reading this? <laughs> but they've managed to break them into smaller increments. These are some of the actual steps. I would love to be in the room watching somebody who has to consult these toaster steps. Okay, number one, remove pastry from pouch. I see where they're going with this. We're banging on all cylinders now. Number two, insert pastry. Vertically. Oh, oh my God. They're reading toaster direction. You're going to throw the vertical concept at them? Then they have a whole set of microwave directions. That just blew me away that you could actually microwave a Pop-Tart. I mean, how long does it take to toast a Pop-Tart? A minute, if you want them dark? People don't have that kind of time? Listen, if you need to zap fry your Pop-Tarts before you head out the door, you might want to loosen up your schedule. I swear it says microwave on high for three seconds. I don't think I want to wake up and be eaten in three seconds. The alarm goes off. I put them in ding. I'm going to come out of here. If you're waking, eating, and hauling in three seconds, you're booking yourself too tight. Pick up some Montana brochures or something. You're not living properly. We just moved. Um, I called UPS to ask them to help out with some boxes. And, you know, they're a good service, but you have to have information ready about your boxes before you even call them. I had no idea. I called them up. Yeah, I have uh, 10 boxes. If you come pick them up. We need to know the weight and the girth. <laughs> okay, goodbye. So I called back, we need the weight and the girth. Okay, I don't know what the weight is, and um, I don't know what girth means. <laughs> so now what's the procedure? <laughs> so this guy talks to me like I'm four years old. Well, do you have a bathroom scale? Uh, yeah, but if I put the box on a scale, it's gonna cover up the numbers! <laughs> What, do I take them off really quick? <laughs> ah, zero, I'm not fast enough. What's he talking about? So then he gives me like his Mr. Wizard formula. How about if you stand on the scale and weigh yourself, get off the scale, pick up the box, get back on, weigh you and the box together and subtract your own weight. I'm going, slow down. <laughs> Hold on, professor. 
I know this guy's never tried this, because I tried it, and you still can't see the numbers! <laughs> what am I, Mr. Olympia? <laughs> Three pounds! Then I had to hang up in the middle of his girth formula. He kept assuring me it was easy. You know, the girth is very simple to figure out. You take the length and you double that by the smaller of the height after you triangulate the hypotenuse from the third side. Of... Okay, I gotta go. I'm getting another call. Yeah, I'm too stupid to talk to you. I just wanna not be on with you any longer. So this is true, I figured I would call back and just make up some numbers, you know? Let him come out and pick him up. If it's wrong, I'll pay the difference. Just dispatch the truck. Please. So I called back. Yeah, I, um, I have uh, ten boxes, and no, I'm another guy. Yeah, and they all weigh exactly 22 pounds, and they all have a girth of three. Three what? Three girth units. Come pick them up, please. I'm, I'm begging you. They're boxes and they're brown and they have tape all on them. And they probably fit on a dolly. Why must you torture me? We needed a refrigerator for our new place and... I, I've never bought a refrigerator in my whole life. I, I went into the appliance store. There's like a 900 of them lined up. There's a salesman there. What's this guy supposed to say about refrigerators? Well, you have this refrigerator right here. This keeps all your food cold for 600. <laughs> You've got this refrigerator. This keeps all your food cold for 800. Check this out, 1400 keeps all your food cold. <laughs> so this guy's working me on this one. I've never seen a guy work so hard. This one is a very nice refrigerator. It has a meat drawer. And um, what you do with that, you would, you would put meats. <laughs> whatever varieties that, that you would choose. These would be your meats. So there's no requirement on the types of meats you could pick. Bacon. Marbled meats. There's an endless selection. Endless. And this one also has a crisper for um, crispy things. Um, potato chips. Look in the door when the door's open. This has an egg area. And that's a very nice thing. It's an area for eggs. You put them all in the egg area. You come home and you go, hey, where are the eggs? Right in the egg area. <laughs> and they're all written in cursive, and that's a real nice feature. <laughs> is, that is a nice touch. <laughs> we also had to get the phone turned on. I'm at my friend's house. I call the phone company. Can you turn on our telephone? Okay, it's going to be a problem. I figured... <laughs> How? Why? It's just going to be a big nightmare. That's our policy. <laughs> it's going to be a nightmare. Something about hell on earth. <laughs> it's different than I thought. I didn't know how it worked, so I asked him, how does that work? Do we have to wait in our home for a few days for the phone people to come out? No, we do it differently now. We can just flip the switch from right here. <laughs> oh, great. Can you go ahead and flip it? 
we're going to flip it next Thursday. Can, can you flip it right now? We're going to flip it Thursday, late, or Friday, or sometime in November. Can you see it from where you're at? Can I come down and flip it? What do I know? I guess there's only one flip switch and he has a lot to get to. I assume they're tiny. Maybe they're big giant switches. They're really hard to flip. You know? Man, he's never going to get to my house. I want to go down here and cheer him on. Go, switch flipper, go! Flip them switches! Flip them good, switch flipper! Get him right. That was great, man. So I had to use a phone to uh, book the flight to come here, and the reservationist gave me a confirmation code. And like I'm an idiot, she gives it to me like this. Mr. Regan, your confirmation code, jot this down. It's B as in boy. Oh, okay. <laughs> P as in Paul. Slow down. <laughs> K as in kite. Oh, I know kite. I know. <laughs> I know all about kite. And Q as in quagmire. <laughs> Give me another word. I want to fly so badly. I called back to confirm the flight. She wanted to know the confirmation code. I don't know about you, but I feel like an idiot trying to quickly come up with words for letters. And I'm panicking on the phone. Uh, the uh, confirmation code, it's uh, B as in, uh, um, oh man, uh, baked beans. Uh, P as in, Pneumonia. Uh, K as in Qaddafi. And Q as in Qaddafi. They only do that with letters. Nobody ever does that with numbers. My code, it's uh, four as in 423. <laughs> Two as in 2,941, no, 47. <laughs> Pretty short code. Sometimes you'll get a confirmation code that includes zeros and O's. You write them the same way, they're completely different keys. They'll give you the number one and the letter I. You'll, you write those the same, they're different keys. A small L looks the same. They don't care, you'll never be able to communicate this back clearly. I'd like to give a code to these people for their big vacation. Here's your uh, confirmation code. You're, you're going to need this for your vacation. Are you ready? Okay, it's 11I10000. One, 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 oh, zero, zero, oh, oh, I10000. One, oh, oh, one I small L. Yes. Bon voyage. You know, I flew here. How come the first class people just, they can just get on whenever they want? I've always hated that. First class people, board at your leisure. Take your time, first class people. Mm. <laughs> Coach people, no wait, sit, sit, scuzz. Wait, little piggies. <laughs> so when you do get on, the first class people, they're already sitting there. They're all sprawled out in their big thrones. Bring me the head of a pig. And a goblet of something cool and refreshing. <laughs> Anyone have a fiddle? Make someone from Coach Fiddle for me. Amuse me. You have fiddles in the overhead racks up there. You're not uh, allowed to even use their bathrooms. The bathrooms up front are for our first class passengers. The coach bathrooms are located at Newark Airport. <laughs> Concourse C. Concourse C, ladies and gentlemen. So 
So when you do board, the first class people, they're sitting there. A lot of them are working as you're boarding. They have computers out and calculators. They're looking up at you like, hey, we're making money right now. Right now we're making money. Go, get in the back. Close that curtain. I don't want to see. Even in my peripheral. Ah, snap it. Snap it shut. What's the matter with us? They got to cover us up with a tarp. You go in the back, everybody has coloring books on. <laughs> hey, Pomer, where was you? Where was you at? You're in the middle, and there's nine of us, and you're in the middle, and we have all the armrests, so you gotta sit like this. You gotta figure out a way to eat your snack while your elbows are touching. You gotta learn how to twist your little plastic utensil. I like to sit way in the back, way in the back. Except for one thing, all the good meals run out, you know. You're poking your head out from row 199. The flight attendants are this big. You can hear the good meals getting snagged. Do we have a turkey sandwich, a chicken quesadilla, and a cold fish head? I'm just... Oh. wonder what I'm gonna get. <laughs> so when they get to the back of the plane, they have to do that flight attendant psychology game and pretend like the good stuff never even existed. It, it, it never even was. Would you like a nice cold fish head? They're frozen solid, frozen head of fish. The eyeballs in there and the skeleton's coming out. It comes with a turnip and a spork. I was wishing you'd have one of them left. Wishing upon a star. <laughs> but I admire flight attendants, man. I really do. They put up with a lot of garbage from people. Have you ever been sitting in your seat and you see somebody trying to fit something in the overhead rack that you know ain't going in there like in a million years? They have like a mattress and a lamp. <laughs> You're looking at him like, what kind of perception problems does this guy have? <laughs> and the flight attendants are always nice. They always run up and act like it might maybe fit. You know, oh, I don't know if that's going to get up there. <laughs> we can check it for you, you moron. <laughs> I know that's what they want to say. I would last about eight seconds at that job. I'd just get up there. Does that look like it's going to fit? You have this much room, you have a dead yak. <laughs> Are you okay? You don't see all these people jammed up waiting on you? You, you don't see any of that. Is it? Oh, this is your world. It's all about you. You let us know when you're all set, Captain You Planet. And I feel bad for the gate agents because they try to get the boarding process to run smoothly, but no one will listen to them. Don't blame them. They try, they get on the intercom. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin boarding. If we could ask for your cooperation, would you all please remain seated until your row has been called? Everyone, please, please remain seated. Everyone, please back away from the gate. Please back away from the gate. Somehow, by the time that comes out the speakers, it must sound like, everybody up and rush the door. <laughs> Everyone, immediately try to squish your fat butt simultaneously in the small gate door area. Hurry. Push and shove, everyone. Push and shove. Do whatever you have to to get on board. This is the last helicopter out of Vietnam. I'm embarrassed to be human. I want to get on! You're going to get on. I want to get on before everybody else! Why? <laughs> Human beings, man. I'm sure you've been at airports with the moving sidewalks. Right? You know the whole stand right, walk left concept? Well, for some people, unlearnable. Woo 
you ain't getting it in, no matter how much stimuli you offer. I've been on them where I don't understand how people don't see that that's the system. There's a big yellow dotted line going down the middle, and it's stenciled every three feet on the sidewalk. Stand, 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 walk, 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 walk. On the handrail, stand, stand, walk, walk. Up here, stand, walk. Pictures of people standing, walking. And I've seen footprints together and apart. And you still have people riding that left handrail. It's fun to fly. Watch them close, because they're the ones at the end of the movie sidewalk. Look. Something changed. Something changed. I'm trying to get into inventing, and uh, that's hard. <laughs> I know what I'm going to try to invent, you know. I don't know if I'm being overly ambitious, but I'm trying to invent an ironing board that when you open it, it doesn't sound like this. <laughs> Every ironing board I've ever opened sounds like a witch being boiled in oil. You ever just look at an ironing board? Can you imagine getting that approved in today's safety conscious world? What did you want to get an approval on? Um, I call it an ironing board. I want to have like a surfboard shaped device about this high and I want to support it with two thin crisscrossing poles so the center of gravity is precariously high. So the slightest nudge would be sure to topple it. Then I want to put a big hot metal thing on the top of that with water, the temperature of lava oozing out the sides and dripping off the board for burn wounds. I want one side to be a white hot heat for scarring. I want the sheer weight to be able to cause blunt force trauma. And I want the whole thing to come to a point for puncture wounds. Oh. It, uh, it seems a little unsafe for adults. I'm not finished. I want a cord coming down to get the toddlers involved. Why are we allowed to have these? <laughs> Inventions intrigue me. I was reading about the walkie-talkie, and I read it was a military invention. That surprised me, because usually military stuff has strong names, you know? Apache helicopter, Tomahawk missile. Walkie-talkie? <laughs> How did that slip through the system? Is a general talking to some guy? What do you have there, soldier? Well, it's a new communication device. It's untethered, which will enable the troops to speak effectively when they're in the field. What's it called? Walkie-talkie! <laughs> Look, I'm walking and I'm talking. <laughs> now you walk in, talkie, general. I'm walking and talking. Are you walking and talking? <laughs> I like it, soldier. What's this explosive device? The whammy kablammy. <laughs> and this is the Rudy Tootie aim and shoot! <laughs> Walk and talk. I'm wearing new contacts. I just had my prescription changed after six years. You ever wait that long? Then you get new lenses. You're like, man, I could have been seeing things. <laughs> How can instantly improved vision not be at the top of your to-do list? I'll see tomorrow. I don't, I don't have time. I don't have time to see clearly. No, I don't. I don't. No, I can't do that. You see what's on my desk? So I go in for the eye exam. I don't know about you, but I concentrate like crazy during the eye exam. You don't want to get a D on that thing. End up with these big, thick Coke bottle lenses. I didn't take it serious. Are you still in here? <laughs> I'm just seeing shadows and shapes. 
it's important. They don't call it a quiz. So I go in there, I sit in that big chair. He slides that big giant thing on my face. Are these my glasses? What happened to me? That'd be a hell of a pair of glasses. Do I like it better like this or like this? I like this one, but I want to see that one again. That one's pretty good, but let's go back to that one. Click, 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 click. I hate that test because I can't commit. I can feel my eye doctor losing his patience with me. Let's try it again, Brian. Which one do you like better, number one or number two? I don't like either one of them. <clears throat> yeah, but that wasn't the question I asked, was it? I asked you which one you like better, and I was careful to phrase it that way. So why don't you keep that in mind while we try it yet again? Which one do you like better, number one or number two? They're about the same. <clears throat> well, why would I waste your time and mine by making them both the same? Did you ever stop to think about that? You ready to try it one more time? What do you want from me? Way too much pressure during that entire exam. They, they do one test every time. I don't know what they're looking for. All I know is I get an anxiety attack in the middle of the damn thing. Tell me the exact moment point A is directly over point B. Now! No, now! Now! Then! I don't know. I don't know when it happened. I'm worried if I'm off by an eighth of a second, I'll get these big giant Hubble coming attraction glasses. So you must have messed up that A-B test. Did I ever? Grand opening. What are they helping me with? My ability to watch cars pass on the highway? They pass now! And they pass now! Man, how do you do it? It's weird in the eye exam room. It's just him and me. It's dark in there. The door's closed. I feel strange when he pulls his chair up uncomfortably close to you. He's like this far from my face. He shines his goofy light into my eyes for about an eternity. How you doing there? I'm a little uncomfortable. Can you back up a tad? Are you looking at my soul? You want a Tic Tac? So he says, you know you have one eye set a little bit higher than your other eye? No. I did not. He goes, it doesn't affect your vision or anything. I just thought you might want to be self-conscious for the rest of your life. I went out to my car mirror. Am I some kind of monster? Is that a hump? I am not an animal. I am a man. What's the matter with him? Then he asked me, would you like to try trifocals? And I'm like... I must have been away a while, because I have no idea what you're talking about. He says, it's exactly what you would think. You can see at three different distances, depending on where you look through your lens. You can see close, medium, or far away. And I'm like, I can't even imagine getting used to that. There's a book, there's a plane, there's Alpha Centauri! Do people need this kind of range? Is that a fly in my nose? Is that a comment? I'm actually kind of quiet off stage. A lot of people don't realize that. I was at a dinner party recently. A bunch of people that I don't know. One guy talking plenty for everybody. And then me, myself, right? And then I, and then myself, and me, me. I couldn't tell this one about I because I was talking about myself. And then me, 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 me. Beware the me monster. 
So I tried to jump in with a little story. I don't want to just sit there the whole night. Right when I'm done with my story, this guy goes, that ain't nothing. <laughs> oh, well, didn't mean to waste everybody's time. <laughs> Telling my nothing story. Here, let Marco Polo speak. He's back with tales of adventure. The story ain't nothing. Maybe it wasn't, because I made the mistake of trying to tell a story about having only two wisdom teeth pulled, and I learned a lesson. Don't ever try to tell a two wisdom tooth story, because you ain't going nowhere. The four wisdom teeth people are going to parachute in and cut you off at the pass. Halt! Halt with your two wisdom tooth tail! You will never complete one, trust me. I'm trying to tell my story. You know, I had some wisdom teeth pulled. I had, um... I had two, I had four pulled. Oh, okay. No, five, no, nine. I had nine wisdom teeth pulled. All of mine were impacted. They were all coming upside down. The roots wrapped around my tongue, coming out my nose. They were tusks. I was a warthog. No anesthesia. They pulled them out with pliers. I was eating corn on the cob that afternoon. Pin the blue ribbon upon his chest. That knocks the socks off of my wisdom tooth tail. Why do people need to top other people? I've never understood it, and I see it all the time. Obviously, people get something out of it. At best, people wait for your lips to stop. Yeah, as soon as... Okay, yeah, you, me! You, me! You see the difference? You see, you see that? Now I do. What is it about the human condition people get something out of that? That's why I have a social fantasy. I wish I was one of the 12 astronauts who have been on our moon. They must love knowing they can be anybody's story whenever they want. They can sit back quietly at a dinner party while some other person, some me monster, is doing his thing and let him go. Let him run with the line while you be quiet. I don't know, really. Let him have his moment. Yeah, I'm a big traveler. I have my business all. I got my own global enterprise. I got to check on, you know, driving in the Autobahn because I keep a fleet of sports cars over in Zurich and I get the Swiss account that I want to check it. Mount Kilimanjaro expedition. Might have to cancel that. You know, the runways on Aspen are a lot shorter the first time you go in there. You know, you know the Pacific Rim Company is going to try to take that over. And they, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, no, it's a global enterprise. <laughs> I walked on the moon. <laughs> well, you have the floor, moonwalker. <laughs> you know, you mentioned driving on the Autobahn. That reminded me. Once I was driving in the sea of tranquility. <laughs> in my lunar rover. <laughs> and I, too, was worried about our speed till I remembered, why? we're the only ones on the moon. <laughs> You guys are great. Thank you very much.